Greetings, my name is Michelle Thielen. I am the founder of Yoga Faith and I'm so thrilled that you found this in any way, shape or form that you did. God is so great to bless us with amazing technology that we can connect wherever we are in the world, perhaps even on your sofa and your PJs or traveling on an airplane. I'm just so grateful that you found this. So let's open up in prayer, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today and I praise you for your Holy Spirit, your angels going forth. I praise you for giving us wisdom and sound knowledge. I praise you for this season of Advent where we can create space to hear from you and be before you for an audience of one, just one, that somehow we would explore together how to connect deeper to you and more profoundly and more intimately. And Lord, just that you would Show us how to enjoy you during what can be a really chaotic season. We ask for forgiveness for making it about anything else than you. And Lord, we just want to get back to basics. We want to get back to our first love. We want to crawl in your lap, lay our head on your chest, and listen to the things of your heart. So during Advent season, Lord God, I pray that that is what actually happens as we create space for you, as we come before you and lay us down, lay our agendas down and experience a holy hush, a quieting of the mind, a stillness of the heart. Father, speak to us during this time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome into this place. You are welcome into every fiber of our bodies, our minds, our temples, our spirits, our souls, to have your way in this place today, to be evident in our life. And for that, we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So you can really break this three-part or three-week or three-hour or three days into whatever sections you want. If you want to make it three weeks, that's great um, as we prepare in this Advent season. And we're going to explore the story of hope and love in the virgin birth of Mary giving way to the Savior of the world and the Savior for humanity. And it's pretty special. It's a really special season for us as Christ followers, not just that we celebrate his birth, but what it, what actually is Advent. And as a four-year studier of Latin, <laughs> um, Advent is really derived from the Latin word Adventus. And it literally means coming. It's translated as coming. And so we want to take this time together to prepare for what was, what is, and what is to come. And I want you to know that God is in all of those words. He was the great I am in your life. He did bring you through. And we're going to learn more about that here in this this part one as we dive into hope. But he also is, he is the great I am. He is very present, not just present, but the word says he's very present in time of need. And he never forsakes us. So I want you to enjoy the is, the right now, the present moment with Christ. But he also is the God of what is to come. And so we are going to take time to look back in hope, to look to the current, to the present, and also to the future together. So it's really a season of readying ourselves for him and remembering what he has done enjoying who he is right now and preparing for what is to come. And that's so exciting because as we close out a year and we look back at all that he has done, we can be so grateful. We can come to him with a breath prayer of praise, of gratitude. We can worship with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul And that really is what yoga faith is, is just a whole body worship. As the word tells us to praise him with our whole self, to love him with all of our mind, all of our breath, all of our strength, all of our spirit. So today we're going to explore that just a little bit 
as I just um, sort of briefly explain the hope of him in the past, the God of who was, and you can even bring to mind the things that he has brought you through. So I want to start with the hope before Jesus, so the past, and we're going to explore some postures of hope as well. And so during this time, if you just want to come into an easy or simple seated posture, you can have your back against the wall if you need support or simply come to the edge of a chair works just fine too, especially if you're traveling, um, coming to the edge of wherever you're at and creating just some length in the spine and inviting the Holy Spirit into every part of your being. And I want to talk about the hope before Jesus as we go through a few of these postures. So about 400 years before he spoke to the Israelites, um, during that time, the Israelites had turned from him with worshiping idols, um, pagan marriages, living for themselves. It was very self-centered existence. And I don't want you to forget to breathe into your being and inviting the Holy Spirit in as you are in your simple seated or really just any posture where you can really set your intention for what we're about to do. But there were some religious leaders that had turned the synagogues really into social and political places of power. The Jews were forced to live with requirements and laws created by religious leaders. It's very legalistic, not a lot of revelation or power. And then the Israelites fell under these several rulers. And then they began to remember all that was said Isaiah had prophesied about Jesus coming. They hoped for a ruler to rebuild Jerusalem. And they hoped for God to return to save them yet again. And I'm so grateful for that because I know for me, he's just saved me again and again and again. So if the hope of the past, if the God who saved you yesterday, if you could enjoy him right now, and praise him for what he's done back there and believe that what he has done back there, he can do right now. And we'll get into the future hope, but he's going to do it again. Amen. John three nineteen says that he came the light into the world and that the people loved the darkness more than the light for their actions were evil. So back in this time, as we know, light and dark doesn't mix, but because this beautiful light of the world came in, they were choosing the darkness. They were choosing the legalistic ways and rulers and Pharisees, and there's no life, there's no power, there's no revelation in that kind of life. And so moving from your simple seated or your easy seated posture, I want you to come to bound angle and bound angle. You can stay seated or you can recline it, but the soles of your feet are together and if you're a yogi, you know you can grab a strap or something to help you out around the tops of the feet or just simply place something underneath the knees so that the inside of the thighs and the hips aren't so pressured. You can place a block or a pillow underneath the knees, but you can lay back on onto the back or just stay against the wall or stay seated with the soles of your feet together. So we're inviting the Holy Spirit into these really innermost spaces now, getting a little bit more intense. I want you to focus on sending your breath to those places and spaces and really just surrendering your whole self to God as we talk about hope. And, uh, you know, John 1, 5 says that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. And I just want to come back to this glorious story of a virgin <laughs> giving birth. Imagine Joseph here, um, you know, and actually he was on his way out. Right. And then the angel we read in Matthew, um, one that the angel came and spoke to him and said that, that she, that Mary conceived through the Holy spirit. And so when we talk about Christ coming and Christ being very present and Christ doing not only for the Israelites or the people we read about in the Bible, but for you today, that he was conceived by the Holy spirit from a virgin girl who was just an ordinary person in all that I can see. And he's trying to do this and use ordinary people just like you and me in this very present day to share this glorious story of hope and peace and joy and love through this beautiful story of a virgin birth, giving birth to the light of the world, the savior of all humanity. 
So from your bound angle, let's just take a couple deep breaths together, inhaling through the nose, sending that breath, sending that life force, sending that Holy Spirit everywhere in your being for healing. And then you're going to exhale anything that no longer belongs in your body, no longer belongs in your tissues and just exhale that out. We're going to do that one more time. Inhale and exhale through the mouth, just letting it all go. We're going to Um, bring our legs together for what we call a staff pose your legs are just right out in front of you you can make this really relaxing or engage as much as possible if you want more you can engage those quadriceps flex the feet and just have that still lengthened spine so you're your very tall self and we're just exhaling the past and we're going to inhale some things in the present and the future here but i want you to breathe through staff pose awaken the back side of the body Um, before we get into the present moment of Christ. So I want to read Luke 2, 11 to you. It says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you, and you will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. I feel like you need to hear that again. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Isn't that beautiful? You know, how blessed are the people who could witness this? And God says, how much more are we blessed that we believe in, in a God we can't see? And that's the beautiful thing about faith. And I'm just so glad that you're here with me. I feel, even though I can't see you, I feel connected to you, that we share. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We share the same father. We share the same bloodline. And so I just want you to remember the things that God has brought you through here, just like he did with the Israelites, that he brought them through, that he is a God that cares about every detail And he kept you alive. Hallelujah. He kept you alive for a very specific purpose. Because I know if you're like me, um, we could have been dead a long, long time ago. And and some of us actually tried to help him out in that area. But you know what? The, The worst story for the devil is that you still have air in your lungs and a beat in your heart. So I pray that together we just do climb on the lap of Christ. And we can hear the things of his heart. So go ahead and just come into bridge. This is our last posture of hope of the past, the God who who was, and we're praising him in this posture. So coming onto your back and um, bringing your heels kind of close to your glutes, and then on an inhale, lifting the hips. So we call this bridge, and you can walk your shoulder blades down, maybe grasp your hands, or just kind of rest on a block Uh, if you want more of an assist. And if you just want to keep your tailbone on the earth, that's fine too. Feel very rooted and grounded in him. But on an inhale, if you are lifting those hips, I want you to remember the God who was, the God who brought you through and protected you and has given you life. And I want you to receive, even though it might not feel like it, look like it, seem like it, I want you to receive the abundant life. I want you to focus on those inhales, bringing in life, bringing in hope and praise and gratitude. And I want you to exhale anything, any pride, any grumbling, any spirit of entitlement. But instead, every inhale, bring in that gratitude, that praise and thanksgiving. We enter into his presence with praise and thanksgiving. Just a couple more breaths here, reminding you of John 1, 5. It says, a light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Amen. You can bring your knees into your chest, just slowly releasing that bridge and bringing your knees into your chest and giving yourself a really big hug. And I want it to be pretty intentional and pretty tight. If God was to hug you, what would that hug look like? It would be pretty strong, right? So go ahead and do that. And maybe you just imagine the arms of the father wrapped around you. I want to talk about the God who is. And this is the hope after his birth. And you can read many beautiful scriptures about his birth through Matthew, through Luke. 
All right. And when you are ready, we are going to come into tabletop. So this is just kind of on your all fours. And you can move through a couple cat cows. And all that means is just tucking your chin into your chest, lifting your tailbone, and then moving into what we call cat cow. So cat is the exhale. You're arching your back up, tucking the chin. And then inhale is the cow where you drop your belly and lift your tailbone up. So just move through a couple of those breaths, praising God for being so present. Thank you, Lord, that you're here with us. As I read you Matthew 2, 11 and 12, it says, uh, On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures, and they presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. can only imagine being there and witnessing this. So from your tabletop, you can go ahead and lift the tailbone all the way up, lengthening the legs. You don't necessarily have to have them straight, but you've probably seen this downward facing dog and just breathing here, lengthening through the backside. The wise men saw the star and they hoped it was the Messiah. They had believed it would come and they went to see and they chose to invest in this truth. And so when Jesus started his ministry, people chose to believe he was and is the Messiah, despite the pushback from all of those rel- religious leaders. So we're, we're thinking about this, this hope that we have in Jesus. And when the wise men saw this star and they followed them and witnessed the birth, going back to that scripture I read about Matthew 2, or in Matthew 2, they opened their treasures And they presented him with gifts. And this season, I want you to know that all that God wants is us. We don't have to give him anything but us, but our praise, our presence. And that's what he desires from us is that we would go to him for his presence, not presence with a T, but his presence. And I think any time that we seek after the giver instead of the gift, we are immensely blessed. And so from down dog, would you slowly step your feet up maybe to the top of your mat or wherever you're at towards your hands and just forward fold, letting it all hang out, exhaling anything. Because during this Advent season, we really are physically and literally and figuratively creating space for Christ to work in us. And we want to share this beautiful story of hope and love to the rest of the world as well. So Holy Spirit, anoint us. Anoint us to point the way to heaven in whatever way, shape, or form that is. Using our God-given gifts, may we appoint people to you. Hallelujah. We're going to ever so gently roll up and come into just a mountain pose. Your feet can be together. They can be hip-width apart. Really roll your shoulder blades back and down and just open up your heart to God. This is a posture of hope. It is a posture of a presence, being present. There's so many presents in the Bible, but this present is P-R-E-S-E-N-T, being present with him as he is with us. So just opening up your heart here. John 9, 5 says, but while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. And so we, we now have purpose prior to following Jesus. There is no hope. There is no purpose. Just moving through this autopilot day by day. But now Jesus ever present, he gives us purpose and we are absolutely nothing without him. From mountain pose, just bringing your hands to your heart center as I read you a scripture you might be familiar with. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. They are to give you a future and a hope. And Jesus experiences all that we do. He understands every single trouble, every single joy. And if you go further into that, the surrounding scriptures, he says, when you seek me with your whole heart, you shall find me. He's not trying to hide. He's very present. And so right now we're talking about the God who is. And right now with your hands on your heart center, maybe taking your chin to your fingertips. I want you to come before him, enjoying his presence and being very 
presence with him. As I mentioned before, observing Advent helps us anticipate what is coming. And so these intentional daily observances, they help us remind us that the greatest gift won't be under the tree this year, right? But the one that deposited into our life through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that awesome? Given us through life and death and resurrection. And this is the hope. This is the hope of humanity is Jesus. And I just don't know how people live without him. I'm a little biased though, right? John 8, 12 says that he spoke to the people one more, once more and said, I'm the light of the world. And if you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. So go ahead and lift your arms up, biceps by your ears, maybe engaging the legs and adding just a little back bend here or a big one if you're ready. And just worship. This is Yes, it's a posture of hope, but this is a posture of adoration and a posture of worship and a posture of praise. And we just praise you, Father God, for all that you are. You are worthy, worthy, worthy of all of our praise. We give you all the glory for being the God who brought us through, the God who was. We praise you for being with us right now, the God who is. And Lord, we just anticipate, we prepare, we expect with great anticipation what you're going to do. The God who is to come, we worship you and we praise you for being our Father, our God. We, we thank you for leaving us your Holy Spirit to help us, to guide us, to counsel us. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 3.16 says, For this is how God loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. He gives us so many chances to have this eternal life. And it says that anyone, whosoever, that is all-inclusive, that is anyone Whosoever believes in him will not perish. So I'm so happy to be journeying with you. Together, you and I have said yes to him, yes to salvation. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for this wonderful, wonderful gift. So you can bring your hands back down. You probably already have (laughs) hands to heart center one more time. And let's just inhale biceps by ears. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhaling him, biceps by ears. Exhale, hands to heart center, exhaling you. Inhaling him, raise those arms. And exhaling. And you can inhale and bring in anything you want here. And you can exhale and get rid of anything as well. Inhaling, bring in his kingdom. Exhaling your will. Inhale his timing. Exhale your expectations and continue to breathe, inhaling his hope. All right, and ever so gently coming back down. We're going to just come to our backs and we're going to start with our right leg coming into big toes. So your whole torso, including your head, is on the earth. And just, you can use a strap here around the foot or just grab behind the hamstring, the knee, the calf, whatever really is available. And just breathing here. Allowing him in. Inhaling him. And exhaling you. We'll give this just a handful of breaths here using the exhales to go a little bit deeper each time as we talk about the God that is to come the hope for his future coming. And so our first posture of hope down here, we call it big toe. So just continue to breathe in that. Just a couple more breaths here before you switch legs. And we see all through the Bible, we see a lot, many, hundreds probably, of um, promises of God that the people had to hope for. Um, We see Abraham having his first child, having to wait as well as his wife, right? Israelites in the desert um, wandering for years and years, which was a journey that some say 
would have only or should have only taken nine days. Some say 11, some say 14. Either way, (laughs) it's a lot less than 40 years. Uh, You can go ahead and switch legs if you haven't yet. And then, of course, we uh, were reminded about the Israelites. Uh, And so we just read about so many promises that he has for us that we have this hope. We have this hope in Christ. We have this hope that he's going to return. And that we continue as Christians, as Christ followers, we continue to hope for that special day when he comes back to restore all of us to our perfect selves, to a state of joy and peace where there is no sorrow, there is no pain. And so he really is the light that saves. And he was a light in a dark 2000 years ago, and he still is today. So that's the God who was and is. And yet we have this hope of the God who is to be. John 12 46 says that I have come as a light to shine in the dark world so that all who put their trust in me, no one will remain in darkness. So we have this hope of light. We can expect our future to be bright, our future to be this abundant life that he told us we can hope for. He says, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Our words are spirit and therefore creative. So we have this power in our tongues, this power to create our worlds. And I look around today and I used to say this prayer and feel free to adapt it to to your life. Steal it. (laughs) I used to say, thank you, Lord, for the life that's unrecognizable. Thank you for the life that's unrecognizable. I had no idea what I was saying. I just knew that I did not want to be where I was. And I was hoping that in five years, I was praying five years would go by really fast, that I would laugh again, that I would smile again, that I would um, trust again. And I would, that was just my prayer. Lord, I pray for the life that is unright. I wouldn't say pray. I'd say, I praise you. I praise you because the Bible says to pray as if it already happened. So I'd say, I praise you for the life that's unrecognizable. And, you know, I just, I look, I have this beautiful view of the valley and and the life that I live, I don't deserve any of it. And I just praise God that we don't get what we deserve. Hallelujah. And he has given me the life that is unrecognizable. And so when you start speaking your world into existence and you start praising God for being the God who is to come. You create your world because he gave you that power. He gave you power in your hands. I, I think that we are not seeing these signs and wonders. It's, it's such an ignored gift that we have. Signs and wonders. Healing is in our palms. We have the power to touch people and heal people. We have the power in our tongues to create a life of abundance. And, and take him at his promises and say them out loud and send them forth. And so we praise you, Father, for being the God who is. And so coming into uh, legs up the wall, just taking both legs straight up so the bottom of your feet is facing the ceiling or the sky and just praising God for being the God who was looking at your feet and legs. And, you know, some, some of us have body image issues. I know most of us have body image issues. And sometimes looking at our legs is hard. But God has carried us. He has created these legs and these feet. And he has carried us X amount of years to the very spot that we are today. He has protected us and saved us. So just thanking your feet, thanking your legs for the journey. I know not all of us have two legs. So inhaling gratitude for what we do have. And praising God for the hell that you walked through. The valley that you walked through. The mountaintop that you were on or are on or will be on the God who is has protected you so from legs up the wall bending your knees and we're going to take the legs over to the left side maybe looking over to the right if that's okay this is a reclining spinal twist and I want you to inhale the Holy Spirit into every vertebrae in your spine and just breathing new life into your backside body. And I want to remind you that really Advent is a time of looking back to remember 
the first coming of Jesus Christ, this beautiful story of his birth and the miraculous, beautiful Savior coming into the world. And we read that if it was just for us, he would have done it. But it wasn't just for us. It's, it's for all of us. And it is just for you. And as we read in John 3, 16, it's whosoever believes. So that is absolutely anybody. Let's take one last breath here. Inhale, find space. And exhale, just release into that posture one last time. And then using your core, set a momentum. See if you can bring your knees up, just using your core strength. And then bring your knees to the other side. And maybe looking to the opposite if that feels okay. And so we also know as Advent as a time of awakening to the present coming. Again, the God who was, thank you. The God who is right now, thank you, Father, that we can be in your presence. And I hope that you're doing that right now in this posture. It's a posture of hope and a posture of rest. And as we celebrate Advent, a time of anticipating the future and really preparing, preparing for this new season, this new year physically on the calendar, but really preparing also for the coming, the final coming of Christ. He tells to us to prepare for him. And what does that look like? What does that look like as we not only count down the calendar days, but we count down a new season, a, a closing of a season, a closing of an era, a closing of you fill in the blank. But we also are closing that to create space for God to do something new. So from your spinal twist, you can open one knee. We're going to come back to that reclining bound angle one last time. I shouldn't say one last time, just a couple more breaths, but um, you've been here before. So the soles of your feet are together and you are, I won't say this is really the most comfortable posture, but you're really just inviting the Holy Spirit in. And we just want to make sure that we close out the past we want to make sure that we create space. And I love doing that together here with you. So soles of the feet together, opening up, just breathing through any discomfort. If you're not feeling anything, maybe just bring the heels a little bit closer to your tailbone. We want to get into those inner spaces. We want to invite the Holy Spirit into those spaces. We don't always like to talk about or show people, but we want to heal those spaces, especially before we go into this new year or a new season. We want to close out some things and create space for God to work. So I want you to take your left knee over to the right once more. And as you do this, don't do it yet. As you do this, I want you to close that chapter. I want you to think of your reclining bound angle as an open book. And I want you to bring one knee over to the other knee as you're closing that chapter. And so we thank you, Father, for all seasons. We thank you for every part of our story. But we, we praise you that we can close this chapter and we thank you for the lessons learned. You're going to open back up to reclining bound angle as if you're just starting a brand new page. It's blank. And we thank you, Father, for being present with us here in this space and place. And you're going to bring the opposite knee over to the knee. So your knees are together once more and you're turning the page you just turned the page. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every chapter, for every paragraph, for every word, for every detail. And coming back to your reclining bound angle once again, giving God your story, giving God your story. It's all part of your story. And I just simply call that his story. I can't say history right anymore. It's just his story. Everything is his story. Thank you, Father. And you can stay in that posture, leaning into the discomfort maybe, or you can come into resting angel which is basically Shavasana, which means corpse. And I just don't like that. So I renamed it resting angel. So maybe it's a big star. Like you're about to make a snow angel, like real big and just give yourself, give yourself to God surrender. This is a posture of surrender 
I'm going to put it here in a posture of hope, but to be totally transparent and honest, this is also a posture of exhaustion. When I have been trying things in my own strength, this is the posture I come to that just reminds me, or I just tell myself I need to get into it to tell God that I give up. So you can see how this is a posture of exhaustion. Uh, but with that, it also comes a posture of rest and a posture of trust. You're saying, I trust you, God, with everything, because this is a really vulnerable posture. So we thank you, Father God, for this time together. We praise you that as we create space, whether it's physically in our body with our breath, exhales and inhales, maybe it's creating emotional space, or perhaps you have just pruned a person or some people out of our lives or whatever it is, Lord God, that you are doing. We praise you for creating that space. We are in absolute praise and gratitude, no matter how hard, how confusing, how challenging, uh, it doesn't make sense. We give you all the glory because what we do know, Lord, is that you're faithful. You are faithful. At the end of any day, you are faithful. And you do all things perfect. So we can't question you, but instead we praise you. We come to you and we enjoy the right now, the present. We enjoy your presence. And we also enjoy the present, the gift of your son. We give you all of ourselves we thank you that this season is a season of joy. It's a season of hope. And as part two will go over, it is a season of peace. And so, Lord, we thank you for peace, the peace that passes all understanding, the joy unspeakable that the world doesn't give, and it certainly can't take it away. We praise you for the joy of the Lord, and we thank you for hope, the hope for all humanity the hope for the future. We thank you, Father God, for your promises. We thank you for the power to speak our world into an existence and into a real, living, abundant life that you have promised. We give you all the praise and all the glory for this season and the season that's yet to come. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I leave you with Luke 2. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you that you will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appear with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God, the highest glory, glory. And on earth, peace to those who whom his favor rests. May you find peace. May you find joy. And may you find his presence for an audience of one, just you and him. May you enjoy his presence during this season and just get back to basics, your first love. Thank you for listening to me. I appreciate journeying with you. I do not take it lightly. I call it an honor and a privilege. And I hope <laughs> that you will join us for part two as we talk about peace in, during this Advent season. Love you and praying for you. Be blessed.